This is Bulldog Country, presented by Minnesota Power and Essentia Health. What is up? Welcome to Bulldog Country. It's our weekly half hour installment of news, highlights, and analysis of UMD Bulldogs Athletics. Our chance to give you, the fans, a bit better idea what actually goes on with these teams and these players that you see competing for UMD. Coming up in tonight's show, we're talking about more Olympians that are bound for Sochi that will be representing UMD. Three former women's hockey players were named this week to Team Sweden. We're also going to introduce you to the newest future Bulldog. He's currently playing right now in Cloquet. And we'll chat with men's basketball head coach Matt Bowen. His season's second half is now well underway. But first this half hour, we are joined by UMD mm -hmm. head men's hockey coach Scott Sandlin. Coach, as always, thank mm -hmm. you very much for being here. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Six points this past weekend mm -hmm. against Nebraska Omaha to open up the, the season's second half. Yeah. Uh, it couldn't have started much better yeah. than that uh, as far as the standings perspective uh, for you and the boys. No, it was a huge six points, obviously. Uh, you know, we needed to to climb up the ladder a little bit, but, uh, you know, it was certainly a very tough series. We got great goaltending, uh, some timely goals, and uh, came out of there with two big wins. So hopefully we can keep that going. Uh, going back to Western Michigan, we've got a little bit of a winning streak, so uh, we'd like to keep that uh, by taking advantage of the two games this weekend at home. And you mentioned the great goaltending you got mm -hmm. from uh, your senior Aaron Crando. He was named the mm -hmm. conference's goaltender of the week. We've been talking mm -hmm. about you wanting a goaltender to maybe mm -hmm. steal a few points for you here and there. Yeah. Is that what Aaron was able to do, uh, especially Saturday night against Omaha? Yeah, he was our best player all weekend. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I think Friday was probably tougher, uh, uh, the quality of shots. I think they had some 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 in tight shots that he made some saves but he had three or four over the course of the weekend that were were highlight reel saves and um, you know they they put a lot of pucks on the net on Saturday which we knew that's that's what they do as a team and you know we did a good job of not allowing a lot of second and third opportunities but Aaron was seeing the puck real well and uh, obviously you know our goalies uh, you know we needed that I, I think our team needed that so hopefully that's something that will continue do you feel the confidence kind of resonate from from the net out mm -hmm. then to the defense and then up to the forwards and, and kind of offensively mm -hmm. you're allowed to just kind of play your game when you know your goaltender is playing well well absolutely I mean a, a great goaltender can make a coach look really good <laughs> you know and uh, it certainly lifts the play, your, your team's confidence there's no question I think that's kind of the last month going into break uh, you know we didn't get you know uh, good goaltending uh, not to pin it all on them uh, in turn we did not play very well defensively and you know and we went one and three and and uh, we needed solid goaltending I think uh, we need some other players to step up which I think you saw this weekend it was great to see Herbert and Basaraba that line uh, get going offensively a little bit so uh, hopefully that's uh, going the right direction it's uh, a lot of positive signs coming out of the weekend but uh, that weekend's behind us and we need to focus on Denver you're getting offense kind of from all over this mm -hmm. season you don't have that kind of one stud guy who's scoring mm -hmm. all your points is that more comfortable as a coach or less mm -hmm. comfortable that you're kind of spreading the scoring out uh very you know i think last year uh we 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 had one line basically and uh you know we needed uh, contributions from other people but we just maybe didn't get that and this year if you look at our scoring uh you know lines one through four everyone's uh you know doing fairly well offensively we don't like you said have that big uh you know, 30-point guy right now, but we've got a lot of guys that are real tight in the scoring, and uh, this weekend was certainly an example of that. I thought uh, Dominic Coninato and Ayafalo and Kraus, uh, their line was really good for us on Friday, and uh, Caleb's line got us going offensively on Saturday, and, you know, but we've got uh, in the, the last uh, part of the season, or the first half of the season, we and, and through the first half, I think you saw different lines contribute, even Cal Dukowski, those lines uh, chipping in goals. So that's kind of how we're going to do it, uh, along with good goaltending, and, and the priority uh, for our team is to play better defensively uh, through the second half of the year. We talked going into this series about maybe some concerns mm -hmm. that you had mm -hmm. that the team hadn't played a two-game series mm -hmm. uh, over that holiday break. They had just mm -hmm. the one exhibition against the USA's, but it seemed they responded well on Saturday. It was a hard-fought battle on Saturday night, but uh, you comfortable with the two-game series that the boys played? Well, I think I thought the first period Saturday, we it was a real high pace. It was you know the intensity you expect on a Saturday, especially in an opposing rink when you win Friday. But uh, I, I thought uh, they they were the better team over the last 40 minutes. I thought we played good defensively, um, but we didn't seem to have a lot of gas left in the tank. Uh, you know, part of that is we haven't played a lot of games, Zach. I, you know, going back to even from December, you know, we've had those breaks, and then we had a two-week break, and then we played the one. And it's not an excuse, but you need to play games, and we need to get into that rhythm. So hopefully just playing those two games will help us as we move forward here going into this weekend, just kind of getting back to 
how hard it is to play back-to-back -back games. So, um, but I, I did see our guys uh, maybe a little fatigued. Um, but at the same time, we played good, pretty structurally defensively, which I think uh, helped us win the game. Coming to practice this week versus mm -hmm. last week, uh, it was a lot different. Uh, just kind mm -hmm. of the mood of the guys, a lot more smiles mm -hmm. out on the ice. You feel as a coach now, they're a little bit more comfortable, having a little bit more fun. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's better when you win, huh? Yeah, you know, it's been a good start. I mean, beating the development team, but you know, winning cures a lot of ills. You know, <laughs> there's no question. But uh, you know, you want your guys to feel that. You know, you want them to get that that feeling about uh, you know you know winning and and how good it feels and you know the other end of it too is uh, is not so much fun but uh, you know it's going to be a you know a grind the rest of the way uh, you look at uh, the schedule and the second half of of any league is is always hard but uh, we we got off to the good start we need to to learn from that put it behind us and hopefully take advantage of of playing at home here against Denver. Perfect. Thank you very much, Coach. We're going to have uh, Coach back later this half hour to talk about that upcoming series with Denver right now. It's Bulldog Country on the My9 Sports Network. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Joining us for this segment of the show is UMD men's basketball coach Matt Bowen. Uh, coach, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a tough start uh, to 2014. I think you can say that you played four games. Uh, you went one and three in those games. But what do you see out of the Bulldogs as you move forward here? Twelve games left in, in this regular season. And I think there's got to be some positive in there as a coach you can uh, get ready for the home stretch. Uh, absolutely. We, I, I think there are a tremendous amount of positives with, with this group. We've, we've had an extraordinary amount of injuries. Uh, we've lost five of our top nine guys to one reason or another. And it's just been kind of been the next man up. We're, we're on our third point guard and Garrison Gillard's doing a great job playing as a, as a true freshman. Um, the, the, the kids are, are been, they've been very resilient. Uh, I think we're gaining a lot of experience. Uh, and and we're, we're putting ourselves in a position where, you know, we have two road games this weekend against uh, Minot and Mary, two teams that we beat at home to where we could get to 500, which would, be a, which would be a great start. When you talk about those younger guys with the injuries, uh, then the unexpectedness of this season, I think you can call it, uh, being thrust into roles that they're not comfortable with, how proud are you of, of the way that they've responded, six and eight? I mean, the expectation is always to win games, but you have to kind of temper those expectations with what you're dealing with as a program. Yeah, they're, they're growing quite a bit, and, and you, can, you can learn a lot in practice, but, but I think it's tenfold in a game. Um, you, you just gain so much more experience. The kids have get, grown so much confidence, and you, and you can see it in, in guys like Lane Olson, guys like Charles Benson, who have basically been thrust in positions that, uh, that they would not have been in if, if we didn't have the circumstances that we were under. And they've responded quite well. And, uh, you know, they're growing up fast, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to help us a bunch for the future. And uh, it, it's, it's already helped us this year. We've seen results this year. Uh, for example, right before the break when we played St. Cloud and won at home, uh, that was a team that uh, previously beat us by 20 plus points and, and we were able to turn it around pretty quick. Uh, and those are just things that the guys are learning from at a, at a real quick pace. Three of those guys that kind of struggled through their freshman, sophomore years, uh, Pete Crawford, Jordan Reese, Reese Zuli, uh, and now they're playing for you at a very high level. They're three of your better players uh, so far this season. We, we live and die by those three. Uh, Reese being a junior, uh, we're, we're certainly fortunate to have him back one more year. And uh, Jordan and Pete have, have demonstrated great senior leadership. Uh, you know, our, our past weekend uh, game against Sioux Falls, Sioux Falls scored four, uh, 64 points. Uh, Jordan and Pete combined for 64 points together. Uh, so, so we're very, very reliant on, on Jordan, Pete, and Reese. And uh, they've provided tremendous leadership. And, and, and Jordan and Pete especially are doing what seniors do. Uh, they're playing with a lot of confidence. They're, they're older. They're stronger than than a lot of the other kids out there, and, and they're, they're performing quite well. You won that game against Sioux Falls. The we rest did. of the guys were able we to did. score we one We chipped point in a combined. couple other okay. points. <laughs> Good. See, everybody else is contributing, but, uh, I mean, the younger guys, uh, I mean, not to discount them, I mean, you mentioned the learning process. They're kind of setting themselves up for good careers here. I mean, you always want to talk about the season at hand, but it is a program and you need these kids to, to have that game experience, to have a good career as a Bulldog here too. Absolutely, you know, it, this is my second year and we, we had a lot of roster turnover from my first year to the next. And, and then you had the roster turnover and then you add the, the significant amount of injuries to the key guys that we've had. I'm very pleased with where we're at. The, the guys have worked very hard. We're getting a tremendous amount of experience from a lot of young guys. That's that's only going to help us for the future. It, it'll be very exciting to see where this season ends up and, and see how much more this team can grow. 
And it's, it's also going to be very exciting to get Brett and the rest of the guys back for next year and, and see where the program can grow. Well, you got 12 games left, uh, left in this regular season, hopefully then the postseason after that. So best of luck to you, Coach. We'll check in with you uh, later in the season. Thank you. Thank you very much. Coach Matt Bowen, we are going to take a break here, but we have got more UME news coming up, including three new Olympians that are headed to Sochi. It's Bulldog Country here on the My9 Sports Network. Welcome back. The UMD Women's Hockey Connection to the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympic Games grew by three members this week. A trio of former Bulldogs were named to the official roster of Team Sweden. That group is led by former UMD goaltender Kim Martin, who will be making her fourth trip to the Olympics. She's got a bronze and silver medal already to her name. She is joined by forwards Pernilla Vinberg and Jenny Asserholt, both of whom will be making a third trip to the Olympic Games. They already both own a silver medal. The official announcement of those three only adds to the international excitement for UMD head coach Shannon Miller. We've had 26 Olympians go through our program and that's really exciting. There isn't a program in the country that has that many and then like you just said we've got a couple leaving our program and then we've got more. They're going to be there that either have been on our program or they're coming into our program. On the men's side of things, three UMD players were named this week, part of the 68-player pool for the 2014 Hobie Baker Award, which will be handed out in April to the most outstanding player in the nation. Forwards Tony Cameronese and Caleb Herbert joined defenseman Andy Walensky as the UMD nominees this season. Walensky is the lone local kid. He's from Duluth. He said this week it's a tremendous honor to be part of that awards conversation. It's very cool to be even in the first uh, consideration for that, I guess. But... Uh, you know, it's a team effort still. We, you know, we really need to uh, to come together as a team, and I think uh, you know, even have three nominations as a as a team is is a pretty cool thing. Some more UMD men's hockey news, but this not as positive. Bulldogs commit Blake Heinrich has signed a contract with Portland in the Western Hockey League. That means he will forfeit his NCAA eligibility. Heinrich is currently playing with Sioux City of the United States Hockey League, where he has six goals and eight assists so far this season. The Cambridge native has signed his had signed his national letter of intent this past November, but players who go to the WHL are not allowed then to play NCAA hockey, so his future as a Bulldog is no more. Two guys who we likely will see on campus are Hermantown native Neil Pionk and ESCO native Carson Kuhlman. Those two are UMD commits and two of the three Northlanders listed on the midterm top 200 by the NHL's Central Scouting Service. Pionk is ranked 91st among North American skaters on that list, which is designed to rank players eligible for the upcoming NHL entry draft. Kuhlman, meanwhile, is one spot behind his future teammate at 92nd on that list. Duluth native and Nebraska Omaha commit Jake Randolph, meanwhile, is the third local player. He is ranked 197th. Another guy we will see on campus soon for the UMD men's hockey team is goaltender Casimir Kaskaswa. He was on the midterm scouting list as the 16th ranked North American goalie. He's currently playing with the cloquet based Minnesota Wilderness in the NAHL. He announced his verbal commitment to UMD this week. Just before the new year, we aired a story on the Finnish netminder and his success so far this season with the Wilderness. At practice, Kasimir Kaskaswa stands out both because of his position and his bright red uniform. But there is one other really good way to tell Kaskaswa apart from his Minnesota Wilderness teammates. He is originally from Europe. We have a German and a Slovakian in the team too, so uh, I kind of mix in with the Euros. and They just think we're funny guys with our uh, accents and all. The playful taunts continue when you consider Kaskaswa's position. Goaltenders have long been considered some of the quirkiest on a hockey team. We like to think that we're a little weird, and uh, I like to think that too, and I take a little proud of that. And, uh, I think he's got a fantastic goaltending demeanor. Um, pretty calm, pretty uh, relaxed, uh, steady. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a fun, fun kind of a fun-loving, witty kind of guy. So he's, he's a, I think he's got a perfect goaltending demeanor, to be honest with you. That demeanor has translated to unparalleled success this season for Kaskaswa. He is among the league leaders in every major statistical category with most of his numbers best termed as downright outrageous. It's been a lot of fun so far and uh, being able to be consistent day in and day out. And, uh, just, uh, yeah, the guy's been working hard so it's kind of making it easy for me. Uh, he's been really solid in the net for us. I mean, he's uh, given us a lot of chances to win games. And uh, it's really nice to know that we have a goaltender back there to help us support and help us win big games. 
and it's winning games for the Wilderness in Cloquet that is one of the biggest keys for Kaskaswa and his future, which hopefully lies with a Division I college program here in the States. I certainly see him playing college hockey. He's getting a ton of attention right now, which is good for him, which is good for the rest of our boys. And, and we're seeing a lot of Division I guys coming into our building and watching us play. So for our program, for our team, for our, the rest of the guys, it's a, it's a big boost for it. It's great. It's great to see. But for now, it's more about continuing to play well and having some fun for Kaskaswa, who says Cloquet has provided him a small taste of his home in Finland. The weather here is uh, basically the same as in Finland, so not a big change. We have got to take a break right now, but coming back, we will again be joined by UMD men's hockey coach Scott Sandlin. Talk to him about the upcoming series against the Denver Pioneers. It's Bulldog Country on the My9 Sports Network. Bulldog Country is sponsored by UMD Stores. Check us out on the UMD campus or online at umdstores.com. Welcome back. One of the most memorable lines from the movie Miracle is when USA head coach Herb Brooks says, I'm not looking for the best players, I'm looking for the right ones. That sentiment would seem to ring true in the choosing of Hermantown native Adam Krause as a junior captain for the UMD men's hockey team. He won't be the team's top point producer, but he is a guy that's well respected both on and off the ice for the Bulldogs. This UMD player profile is brought to you by Mining Minnesota. Rebound held at the wall by Susie and dumped in deep. Now in the slot, score, and that's a huge goal. Adam Kraus. Ask around the Bulldogs goal. locker room, and it's really no surprise that Adam Kraus this season is serving as a junior captain. He works hard every shift, and rarely does he, you know, get beat, or he's he's always accountable for, for his position, and um, I think that's, that's what a captain uh, should be able to do. He's just been a model Bulldog. Um, he's a great kid to look after on the ice, in the weight room, and in the locker room especially. If you ask the Hermantown native, he'll tell you it's been a dream to wear the letter for his hometown team. It still hasn't totally sunk in yet. It probably won't until I leave, but uh, you know, it's really cool. And, and it's cool to be around such a young group of guys and, and so, so much talent and uh, you know, so much potential. Krause is one of those guys with potential and it's shown this season. Midway through the year, he's already doubled his career goal total at UMD. In true now. captain form, Krause bears none of the credit. And they score! And Adam Krause! I've had the opportunity to play with some really talented forwards this year and uh, you know that definitely helps and <laughs> they get me a puck a few times and you know it goes in but yeah no I'm really grateful for you know the opportunities Coach Allen has given me. It's an opportunity that Kraus knows is rare. He's the team's first non-senior captain in seven years. With only a year and a half left at UMD he says it's all about making the most of each day. The time's flying by way too fast right now and uh, you know to be a captain at UMD is pretty special and it's something I never take for granted. What's made Kraus even more special is his durability. He skated in 72 consecutive games for the Bulldogs, the most on the team. That's not the only thing he wants to be remembered for. I just want to set a good example, especially for the young guys, and kind of you know set the culture here at UMD with with the hard work and you know just be be a good person around the rink and uh, work hard. And joining us once more this half hour is Kraus's mm -hmm. head coach there at UMD, Scott Sandlin. Mm -hmm. Coach, uh, mm -hmm. continuing the conversation about Adam for just a second, mm -hmm. to, to be named a junior captain at this level of hockey, pretty rare mm -hmm. thing for a player. What do you see in him as far as a leadership standpoint uh, from the boys this year? Well, I think, number one, the guys really have a lot of respect for him. He's a hardworking, uh, you know, he's, he's good, uh, he's good uh, academically. Uh, he works hard uh, both on the rink and off the rink. He's got a little bit of a sense of humor, and uh, you know he does a lot of little things. You know, it's uh, you know he helps load the bus. He you know things that maybe the players don't notice, but the coaches notice. But uh, you know, certainly a great choice. He's he's got a lot of great qualities, and you know I think he's learned you know even through the first half how to be a better leader. Um, so uh, those things are always uh, real positive as uh, as he moves forward. As you know, obviously. With one more year, year and a half left, uh, we've got a, a pretty solid leader there. He's certainly uh, been solid for you mm -hmm. as far as being in the lineup night mm -hmm. in, night out. I'm sure he'll be there again this weekend against Denver. Uh, another chance at mm -hmm. conference points for you and the mm -hmm. boys. So what do you have to do well against the Pioneers when they come here to Amsoil? Well, again, they're a team, uh, if you look at how they've done over the last 12, 13 games, they've been pretty red hot. Uh, they've got a great goaltender in Sam Britton. I think he's leading the league uh, in all the categories. He's uh, win, save percentage, uh, goals against. So. Um, we've got to find a way to solve him, number one. But they're they're a real solid team. Uh, their their forwards, uh, you know, may not uh, be the big name guys either. But they've got some uh, real talented defensemen that are very very big on the offensive part of their game. Uh, the Legia, which uh, people maybe remember from last year, uh, Zajac, Butcher, guys like that that are going to be up in the play. So we've got to make sure we 
don't give those, those guys that opportunity, um, you know, but it's going to be a real tough series. They've got a new coach in Jim Montgomery, so uh, I think they started a little slow, but I think now they're getting adjusted to, to what he wants in his systems, and they're playing extremely well. So uh, it's just a typical weekend where there's no easy games, but uh, we're excited to get back home and play, and certainly coming off the two wins, uh, hopefully we can get that first one on Friday. Ending the first half, uh, tied mm -hmm. for sixth place, mm -hmm. obviously not where you wanted to mm -hmm. be in the conference standings, but you get the six mm -hmm. points at Omaha, you got 14 conference games left. Do you kind of like where you sit right now as far as a potential mm -hmm. standpoint in the second half? Well, I like it a lot more than I did going into <laughs> last weekend. You know, again, it's so important to get points every weekend. You know, I think, uh, you know, with the three points uh, per game, uh, a lot of things can change in a hurry if, you, if you're fortunate to get two wins, but it can also change the other way if you don't. So you got to still maintain that. Um, we need to take advantage of playing our home games. Uh, like I said, we've been pretty good on the road all year, um, but we need to be better at home, and um, hopefully that starts this weekend. But, uh, you know, the swings can be so immense in that uh, with the point structure that, uh, you know, you just got to take it a game at a time and not look too far ahead because, uh, you know, I like what we did. Like I said, we put that behind us. Hopefully keep the confidence rolling into this weekend and find a way to get more points. It starts on Friday. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Coach. Best of luck against the Pioneers. Thanks, Zach. Thank you. Before we close out our half hour tonight, we're going to look ahead to next week here in Bulldog Country, men's and women's basketball back at home for games against MSU, Moorhead, and Northern State next weekend. Track and field will go Friday at the St. Thomas Showcase. Men's hockey takes a small break from the conference play we talked about to go play in the North Star College Cup. They go Friday against Mankato. And the women's hockey team on the road Saturday and Sunday to take on big WCHA rival Wisconsin. So with that, we're going to say goodbye, Bulldogs fans. Remember, you can keep up with any and all UMB news on our website, nncnow.com. We'll be back same time, same place next week. Until then, I'm Zach Schneider. Thanks for watching Bulldog Country here on the My9 Sports Network.